Good day to anyone viewing this presentation. My name is Ken Hansen, and this presentation seeks to satisfy the requirements of the course Studies in Short Fiction conducted by Dr. Stephen Fuller. I was unfamiliar with Louise Erdrich's work, but I find a multi-pronged interest in her authorship and the subject matter presented in her stories. I feel an affinity to the Native American culture. Also, I grew up in Minnesota, and that has helped me to develop a keen interest in their, cultural, in their culture. Erdrich's heritage is Chippewa Indian and German American. She is a member of the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa. For the purposes of this presentation, I selected her short story, Machi Manito, and the theme from our studies of ethnicity. Machi Manito is a story of Native American life with the tribe known as the Anishinaabe near Lake Machi Manito. The narrator is an elder in his tribe named Nanapush, and he is a storyteller. I believe this name is a representation of the Anishinaabe word Nanabojo, which is a term for a spiritual storyteller. His life becomes entwined with Fleur, a young woman who survives tuberculosis but loses the rest of her family to the disease. Nanapush nurses Fleur to health, and she returns to her family cabin near Lake Machimanito to live by herself. Rumors abound in the community about her. A young tribe member, Eli Cashpaw, a recluse who avoids most contact with the rest of the tribe, takes an interest in Fleur, and then gossip abounds that Eli may have gotten Fleur pregnant, but we never learn whether she was really pregnant or not. Machi Manito is rich in allusions and insights into Native American culture. Within the first paragraph, I hear subtle references to her heritage when Nana Push, the narrator of the story, says, quote, We started dying before the snow, and, like the snow, we continued to fall. Unquote. I find this opening sentence to be spectacular. Erdrich utilizes the cultural technique of referring to the time of year as before the snow. Much of the research I have accomplished for this and other projects about Native American culture indicates they did not use the calendar to refer to the time of year, but rather the ways the seasons changed. Also, I wonder if this sentence is not a double entendre. I think she is indicating through construction in this sentence that the dying began in one year before the first snowfall and the phrase, quote, we continued to fall, indicates the dying continued into the next year's fall. The dying Erdrich writes of is primarily from tuberculosis, a disease that ravaged the indigenous populations in North America and provides the reader with insight into the term from critical theory of ecological imperialism. Erdrich uses the character of Father Damien selectively in the story, which I perceive as a subtle reference to the ubiquitous presence of religious figures in the onslaught from white people into the world of the Native Americans. Everyone accepted the false narrative that the Native Americans were uncouth savages who needed God in their lives. They had their own devotion to spirits, fearing malevolent ones, encouraging friendly ones for various activities in their daily lives. Many Native Americans are quite devout in their spiritualism. Erdrich alludes to life on the reservation, another negative result of the white man's conquest of the various Indian tribes. Life on these reservations was extremely difficult and crowded. She tells of bear and buffalo hunts and trapping beaver, all activities endemic to the Native American way of life. It is extremely difficult and potentially a hazard to one's credibility to make generalized statements about North American, Native American culture. Fundamentally, this is because, quote, to do so assumes sort of a unity of con or consistency among literally thousands of ethnic groups who inhabited North America before the coming of Europeans. That was a quote from Professor Godlaski. The thousands of tribes and bands who occupied North America prior to the arrival of white settlers all had various customs and traditions, so it is virtually impossible to apply generalized terminology to the subject of Native Americans. One must understand that the Native American populations in North America had occupied the land for 15 to 20,000 years before the white man came upon the scene. In an effort to effectively deal with the subject of North Amer Native American culture, I wish to focus on a particular aspect, which Erdrich does write about, and that is the use of tobacco. 
I discovered the work of Professor Theodore M. Godlasky of the College of Social Work at the University of Kentucky in his journal article entitled, quote, Holy Smoke, Tobacco Use Among Native American Tribes in North America, unquote. Now, the reader may be aware of the stereotype with regard to Native Americans smoking a peace pipe. Most white settlers never really fully understood the spiritual significance of tobacco smoking within the Native American culture. Well, and I would like to submit that tobacco smoking is a valid representation of a vitally important practice within their culture. Nanapush, the narrator of the story, evidences the importance of tobacco and spiritualism when he says, quote, I offered tobacco, smoked a pipe of red willow for the old man, unquote. His offer of tobacco was to assuage the pillagers, who are, apparently, spirits in an Anishinaabe's world who can be malevolent. As Godleski states, tobacco, quote, was associated with rituals and taboos, unquote. Even though Nanapush tries to appease the spirits, he still says, I think they followed me home. All the way down the trail, just beyond the edges of my sight, they flickered, thin as needles, shadows, piercing shadows, unquote. The cultural significance of smoke is quite interesting. Smoke seems to be an element of spiritualism in both the Native American culture, Christian culture, and others. I submit that the smoke emulates a version or vision of spirit beings. As I said previously, in the conquest of North America by white folks, most never understood, and many today probably still do not understand, that, quote, smoking as an act relating the smoker spiritually to all living things and to the creator. That's a quote by Professor Godlasky. Smoke then becomes or is a medium for communication with the spirit world. In an interesting aside with regard to pipes, there is a town in southwest Minnesota named Pipestone. The substance's scientific name is Catlinite. It is a red clay stone that Native Americans use for a variety of pipes. The stone ranges in color from pale pink to blood red and has a small lighter spots which are sometimes referred to as stars. The Pipestone National Monument is nearby. I would like to share a final thought from Professor Godlasky. He says, quote, the rituals associated with tobacco smoking among Native Americans in North America captures the heart of Native American spirituality that all things are sacred, related, and bound together in the great holy, the great mystery. It is certainly no surprise to me that Louise Erdrich's corpus of works is so revered. She writes from a position of validity about Native American culture in an entertaining manner. She has been recognized extensively through awards and credits. She has written three books of poetry, her work is renowned in that she has received two fellowships, one from the National Endowment for the Arts and a Guggenheim Fellowship. Her book, Love Medicine, won the National Book Critics Circle Award for Fiction. If there are any questions, I provide my contact information here. And also, please be sure to see the next slide for works cited.